Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Hello, my name is Will. Welcome, welcome. I have a new episode today. I thought I'd talk about something that is pretty much common knowledge, and that is the fact that we're not, we've not been able to produce a purpose-built vehicle for The Boring Company. We are going to have to utilise existing Tesla vehicles. The most... Uh, Useful vehicle that is in the current Tesla lineup is the Model X. It holds six people at present. That has been mentioned by Steve Davis. He thinks that is the perfect vehicle for this moment in time. Hopefully a new vehicle is coming in the near future. But I thought, well, let's talk about that vehicle and potentially what we could do with that to make it a bit more fit for purpose. So... Here we are, Tesla Model X Long Range Plus. So there is rumored to be an update on the Tesla Model X and Model S. They're going to add an additional 10 kilowatts hours of battery cells. So we're gonna get even more range, potentially even more power and a plaid mode to add to that. Beautiful, beautiful. So I expect that those are the vehicles they're going to use for the Boeing company. Now here it is, here's the Model X it's been around a long time. It's still a very beautiful vehicle. Very, very big vehicle. Until you actually see it in person, you don't realise how big it actually is, certainly compared to other European uh, vehicles, SUVs, uh, that sort of thing. It is a big, big vehicle. And obviously the Falcon Wing doors are a piece of absolutely immense engineering uh, ingenuity. So, it's a stopgap solution. I'm not denying that. I'm not too happy about that. But it, it was just an impossibility for the Boeing company and Tesla to come together and create something that would be perfect for this and do it in a short period of time. It, it's, just not, it's just not a case of producing some designs and sending it through a factory. There's a lot more to it specifically with a vehicle that's going to be carrying thousands and thousands of people over the course of its lifetime it obviously needs to tick all the boxes and uh, people need to be happy that it's going to be safe so to do that takes you know at least a, a year and a half two years so that's not going to happen obviously tesla has been working on the model y and the roadster and the tesla semi semi truck there's not really uh, enough engineers. Engineers are in very, very short supply. And, and one thing Elon Musk recently said is you just can't build a factory to produce engineers or exceptional engineers. It's not really viable. It takes a lot of time and experience to become an exceptional engineer that is fit to work at Tesla. Developing an AEV, Autonomous Electric Vehicle, was thus not viable in 2019, maybe 2021. I have a feeling that they are working on something right now. When that will be ready to be, uh, you know, rolled out, maybe at a press conference or some kind of uh, a Tesla event. Maybe I'm thinking early 2021. Hopefully, Elon Musk is taking this very, very seriously, and Steve Davis is pushing him to make this vehicle because it makes such a big difference to have a big. 16 seater 14 seater vehicle in the Boeing company portfolio a modified model x should be capable of transporting seven to nine people now currently at present it carries six people however they could make some modifications to the interior of the vehicle to add maybe two maybe three seats that would be perfect and obviously it would make the system more efficient because they would require less vehicles Current Model X production line in California has spare capacity. I believe the factory at Fremont for that particular line for the Model X is at around 80 to 85% capacity. Therefore, with a, with a couple of tweaks and some modifications to how they assemble the vehicles, I'm pretty confident they could run through a specifically Boeing Company uh, focused Model X through that production line and do it in sufficient number to satisfy the demand. Because really, the only need to be producing 
an extra, you know, 15, 20 vehicles per day to be able to, uh, well, even per week. Let's say five extra vehicles per day to satisfy the demand for the boring company. Another good idea is potentially taking existing vehicles and having a third party uh, disassemble the interior of the vehicle and repurpose it for the boring company. That could be done fairly cost effectively. There are plenty of people that exist that will do that work, especially on a contract basis for the boring company. Potentially for the Las Vegas project, they're only going to need around 200 to 240 vehicles. Uh, if they start now, potentially they could get a third party in and they could be pushing vehicles out uh, fit for purpose for the Boeing company fairly quickly. Uh, so, and obviously, a lot of these vehicles are, are returned because people are buying med maybe Model 3s or Model Ys. So it, it makes sense from a financial ex uh, perspective to reuse those uh, existing Model Xs from 2018 and 2019. Um, they need to obviously have the most modern version of uh, Autopilot and Hardware 3. So they might have to install that as well uh, whilst they're repurposing it. I think 4,200 passengers per hour is still still very, very possible with a fleet of Model Xs. They'll obviously need, you know, 20 to 30% more vehicles. But um, there's plenty of capacity in that system for queuing vehicles and um, platooning vehicles. So I don't think it's going to be an issue because... We've got 0 0.82 miles to play with over the course of two tunnels. So, this was the initial concept for the Boeing company. It's perfect for what we need. It's got large automatic doors that open up on both sides. It's got a display terminal there so you know where you're going. And most importantly, it's got a very large battery. It's got a very high top speed and it has a capacity of up to 16 people. The Model X, not quite really what we need, but it, it, it's okay. At the moment, it's got six seats. I think if they installed bench seats, uh, they could maybe squeeze in another two to three seats. If they could remove um, the dashboard and the steering wheel, possibly they could then maybe move the seats forward another three or four inches, so around 100 mil. They can move the seats in the middle slightly further forward and add an additional seat in the middle of a bench style and then add three seats on the back so you've got your extra headroom. The key fact here is it's just not big enough. Despite it being close to 20 foot long, which is big, there is a lot of wasted room in the vehicle. It, it, it's built for you normal, you know, normal people with a family who want to put things in the the front or in the boots, who typically drive around with one, two or three people in there. It, it, it's not really a, a car that's, that's, that's really suitable for driving, you know, six, seven, eight people constantly, you know, seven, eight hours a day. But I think with some modifications, they can make that a possibility. The main thing that that's the problem with this is that we're not utilizing the full tunnel. There's a lot of room in that tunnel. And if you want people to actually walk in and walk out of a vehicle, you need it to you need it to be quite tall. You need it to be at least around eight foot tall, if not slightly more. Because you have all that room that you have to play with that's just being wasted. So what you want is a much taller vehicle with automatic doors either side so you can get people in and out of the vehicle quickly. Um, at least with the Model X, we have the Falcon Wing doors, which obviously help people getting in. But they're fairly slow to open and close, which could affect uh, uh, times for vehicles uh, disembarking from stations. Currently, they have a range of 325 miles. I believe that's going to be extended to close to 400 when they have the new battery system. In terms of operating at very, very high speeds in excess of 125, 140 miles per hour, um, the range will drop below 200 miles. However, this obviously does fast charge quite rapidly and they can have lots of vehicles in reserve. So it's not, not really a 
uh, a problem if they have to swap the vehicles out every three to four hours. The main issue with this vehicle is this wasted space here. So where your frunk is, uh, it's just wasted space. You can't use that in the Boring Company tunnels. What you really want is a vehicle that is shaped to go over the vehicle so people can sit over the real wheel arches. And the same goes for the, uh, uh, the boot of the car, as we like to call it here in the UK. Again, it, it, it needs to be higher. You need to be able to put people in the back there. Because it's curving downwards towards the, uh, the rear of the spoiler there, it, you can't really tuck people into that space. And it, we're not really going to get people throwing suitcases into the car um, during the Boeing Company's operation in Las Vegas. So it's not really... It, essentially, it's just dead space that we can't use. I mean, another option, you, you could potentially throw some extra batteries in there to increase the range, but um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure that is really necessary with a vehicle like this. This is a vehicle by a startup ca called Canoe, and I, I, you're probably thinking, Will, why do you keep showing us this vehicle? I like this vehicle. This is exactly what I imagine the Boeing Company would be producing. Maybe, you know, 10 to 15% longer and slightly higher than this. If this vehicle was another, uh, let's say, 25 centimeters taller, uh, this in, this man here could walk in and walk out of it. The best thing about this vehicle is this bench style seating, which is absolutely perfect for what we want to use uh, this vehicle for in terms of getting lots and lots of people in there. I believe this vehicle can sit up, seat up to 10 people very comfortably. And, and that's what we want. We want to utilize that space as effectively as possible. So thumbs up from me. Okay, summary. We've got no option other than to use the Model X at present. There's no way we can develop a vehicle in time for the Las Vegas system. I'm confident they are speak, uh, you know, thinking about it and designing uh, a mini bus style vehicle at Tesla, but that's gonna be a good you know, nine to 18 months away. At present, we have the Model X, which is a good platform on, on which to build. If we could uh, retrofit those vehicles and possibly some uh, uh, pre-owned vehicles, we could definitely uh, utilize that platform very effectively. Um, people are gonna be comfortable in those vehicles, no problem, that's not an issue. They're gonna be able to move very, very large numbers of people if we have enough Model Xs, and obviously they can get up to the, the top speed required and also have quite a long range. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not really a major issue. I'm somewhat unhappy about it, but I mean, the Model X is a beautiful car. It's really nice inside, really smooth drive. We can't really um, pick faults with that vehicle. I, I, you know, you can't, you can't really complain about it. We've not really got any other option to go on. Hopefully, um, they can make some big modifications to the Model X at the Fremont factory. And then when we actually see the opening of the Las Vegas system, which is only eight and a half, nine, well, nine and a half months away, we're going to have an absolutely phenomenal time sat in our Model Xs, zooming through those tunnels at very high speeds and sat there with, you know, seven or eight other occupants very, very comfortably. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, join me on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our amazing Discord server, which you can join for free and talk about all things The Boring Company, Tesla, and of course, all the new TBMs that Elon Musk has been uh, talking about over the years. Thank you for joining me. And remember, guys, don't be boring. And we'll see you very, very soon for another video. Goodbye.